In our Seventh-day Adventist Church, this Sabbath is dedicated to religious liberty. And when we talk about topic in the United States, it's something, when we talk about this topic somewhere else, it's different. Today, we'll continue our series from the book of uh, Second Kings. And last time we talked about Naaman that came from Syria, from a foreign country, to find a cure for his leprosy. He was proud. He didn't want to accept uh, Elisha's requirements. He said uh, there were better lakes or cleaner lakes in his country. And he got mad and he wanted to go home. But thanks God for his servants. They told him, you came here. A lot of mileage, a lot of days on the road, dust, uh, heat, with no air conditioning during that time. Uh, let's try to do what the, the prophet said. And finally, he humbled himself and uh, he was baptized seven times. Seven times in the um, Jordan River. In the, as Lance read the scripture, he was healed. Not only he restored, he was restored as he was before he got sick. The Bible says his flesh or his skin was like a baby. You know, we have some babies in church. Take a look at them to see their skin. Uh, you love them. You want to smell the skin. You want to kiss that, that uh, baby. The Bible said Naaman became like a baby. That means... When God wants to restore you, and when you accept God's intervention in your life, you don't become exactly as you were before you had a crisis or an issue in your life. God wants to restore everything in your life, and you have a new journey, a new beginning. And the Bible said, and I want to ask you, invite you to open your Bibles in uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, and to read from verse 15, And he returned to the man of God, he in all his aids, and came and stood before him, and he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servant. But he said, he means uh, Elisha, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. We have here a special expression that Naaman used. Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Friends, probably he read the news on a regular basis. Or uh, secret uh, intelligence during that time inform him on a regular basis what happened not only in, the, in his country but all over the globe during that time. And probably he heard something about the God of Israel. But because he conquered that territory, he thought the God of Israel somehow is inferior to his own God. And he didn't take any, he didn't pay any attention to other religions because be, he was victorious and during that time, they said, if I was victorious, my God was more powerful, where my God is real, and all the others are not. But he was a leprous person. And when he came, after he was healed, the Bible said he declared, where he said, indeed, now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Friends, we preach the gospel around us. We use any ways possible, literature, television, missionaries, uh, one by one to our influence. And people somehow, they know a little bit about our God. They know about our faith. They know about our spiritual journey. But friends, as long as they think their God, their religion, their spiritual condition is superior to all the others, there is no hope for them except if they humble themselves and except if they come to the real God and ask for help and except God performs a miracle for them, 
then they will realize there is no other God than the God of Israel. Sometimes we preach the gospel, we open the scripture, we have different Bible studies with people, and they don't get it. Why? Because they don't need God at that point. They don't feel they need God. But while they have an issue, while they have a, a problem, that is the great, greatest opportunity for them to be in contact with that God that can heal, that can restore. That means, friends, we do our best preaching about God. But look for those opportunities where people are in need, where in desperate need, and tell them, I know God in Israel that can perform a miracle for you. Come and be in contact with him. And the Bible said, Naaman was so happy, so grateful. He wanted to pay something for this miracle. And he wanted to offer a gift to, to this prophet. Now, prophets received gifts from time to time. And I remember Elisha, Elijah, he uh, lived for free because ravens brought him gifts. He always uh, uh, needed people to care for him. And even a widow took care of him for a long period of time. That means receiving something, is, it wasn't a problem in different conditions. But at this time, Elisha said, no way. I cannot receive any gift from you. Why not? Because he didn't want to let Naaman believe that he did the trick. He had the magic power. He wanted to let Naaman believe and being convinced that God was involved, not a human person. Uh, Elisha was an, just an instrument to facilitate that special encounter between Naaman and God. Now, uh, Naaman, as you know, he wasn't satisfied with that, and he said like this, verse 17, Then if not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, but uh, to the Lord. Yet in this thing, may the Lord pardon your servant when my master goes into the temple of Rimon to worship there. And he leans on my hand and bow down in the temple of Rimon. When I bow down in the temple of Rimon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in these things. Then he said to him, go in peace. Elisha said to him, go in peace. So he departed from him uh, a short distance. Now, Naaman was healed. He had a new beginning, an amazing beginning. He couldn't wait to go home and to see his wife's attitude. Can I touch you? Can I give you a hug? Can I kiss your new skin? Wow, a wife is so happy to have a husband like that, especially in his condition. But he didn't say, hooray, I am blessed, I am happy, I am satisfied. I go home and I do whatever I want because I have a new beginning. My DNA is changed. I have new genes. I can live longer and so on. I'm happy. Immediate thought Naaman had was, I cannot go home as I came here. I cannot go home and live a normal life as I used to live. I'm a new person. I benefited a special blessing from God. It's my time to have a special commitment in my relationship with Him. Before I worshipped other gods. Before I did this way. Before I was involved in that false religion. But from now on, I cannot live that way. I have to go back and to worship the only God, the only God. And strangely for me, in our time today... He asked for some dirt. You know, the expression in the Bible, the holy ground, they took it literally. You know, when I go somewhere and I have to pray in a restaurant, I don't take a holy dirt for my house or from the church to have a prayer upon it. I have the prayer in my mind. I don't let anyone know that I pray sometimes. When I go to a, a trip and I'm in a plane, I pray but I don't take any special carpet, anything. But during that time, they took it literally. 
He said, can I have some special dirt from Israel? Because that helps me. It's a reminder for my new commitment uh, to God. And uh, Elisha said, of course, we can take a lot. We have here no problem. Today we, they have issues when they fight for that dirt in Palestine. Uh, probably because they consider both sides. It's holy, it's sacred, and so on. And uh, he said, I have an issue. It's a religious freedom issue. Uh, my job requires me to go with the king in the temple. And that's the job description I have. Uh, I have to bow down actually more to help him to, to uh, uh, worship there. But I don't worship any idols from now on, but I have to be there. Uh, can you ask the Lord to pardon me? Now, if I was myself, I would say, no, no way. You are a new believer. You are, no, you are a new Christian. You have to let everyone know about your faith. This is your fight. This is your time to take a stand for God. You'll be a martyr like Daniel's friends or other people in doing the history to take the risk. But I, surprisingly, I see here in the scripture, Elisha said, go in peace. That's okay. Friends, no, God knows better than I know. God has better solutions than I have have. God knows each and every one of us spiritual journey, our spiritual level, our motivation, what's going on. That's why friends, we are not supposed to be judgmental. Yes, according to the Bible scripture or according to the Bible knowledge, there are times when we have to admonish some people, to tell them they are not, not right, to tell them to go to the next level. But to do that in Jesus' spirit, carefully, not replacing God, not taking God's place in any way. This person went home restored, satisfied, happy after his baptism. His baptism was seven times. I don't know, I never baptized anyone seven times uh, to see what happens, but for him it was a special requirement or instruction from God. This is the first part of the story today. A person comes, he was baptized, he was healed, he was restored, he wants to be sure he will worship God from now on, and he goes home in peace. Friends, this is God's plan for all of us today. Because every time we come here to listen to his word, we recommit ourselves to him. And we, we say, Lord, I want to go home different than I came. And I want to be sure when I go home, I worship you. If it's necessary, I take some holy ground from here as a reminder, but I want to be sure I worship you. And this is God's message for us today. Open the scripture again and read. Let's read together in verse 20. And the Bible said, But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman, the, the Syrian, while not receiving from his hands what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, It is all well? And he said, All is well. My master has sent me saying, Indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountain of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. So Naaman said, Please take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with uh, two charges of garments and handed them to two of his servants. And they carried them on ahead of him. When he came to the citadel, he took them from their hands and stored them away in the house. Then he let, them, let the men go, and they departed. Now he went in and stood before his master, Elisha, said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. Then he said to him, 
Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? It is time to receive money and receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants. Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence, leprous as white as snow. Friends, I don't like this passage. I wanted the scripture to end. In this chapter to end where Naaman went home in peace, happy. Couldn't wait to meet his family, his king, his co-workers, his neighbors, to tell them about the great God. Probably slowly to talk about a new style of worship. Probably praying for a special guidance from the Holy Spirit to let the king know there is another God and to do something, probably. This is what I imagine. But friends, the Bible presents the other side of the story. The Bible, as I mentioned, said in verse 20, but. That means the opposite on the opposite side. We have here a pagan that didn't know much about God. It was a young lady. She told him about a God of Israel. He took that as a fact. He said, I will try. When he came here, he found God, but not much knowledge. He didn't know the 28 fundamental beliefs. He didn't know the whole church history. He didn't know the miracle God performs for Israel. He didn't know anything. And he went home happy. But the Bible says, in the house of the Lord. And I read again, but Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God. That means the closest one possible to the kingdom. The one who witnessed, witnessed a lot of miracles. Elisha wanted to use him as an instrument in performing some of the miracles. And he was there. He knew about worship. He came to church on Sabbath, the right day. He worshipped the, the right way. And the Bible said, he said, Look, my master has spared Naaman, the Syrian. The Syrian emphasized in my Bible. The Syrian. That means, I know they were enemies. I know Syrians made them life miserable. I know they conquered the country and they took some slaves from their country. And he couldn't go over that. He said, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian while not receiving from his hands that he brought. Friends, the Bible is inspired. We have in verse um, 20, 20, this expression, but as the Lord leaves, I will run after him and take something from him. Look back at verse 16. Verse 16 says, Elisha said this, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing from you, Naaman. And Gehazi uses exactly the same expression. As the Lord leaves, I will run after him and take something. His master says the same expression, I will not take anything from you. He uses the same oath in God's presence. That means God will punish me if I will not do this. Lord, please help me in doing this. It's like having a prayer, like a special ceremony until you do this. And Elisha said, I cannot do this because I'm in God's presence. This is horrible. This is something that we'll never do. And Gehazi says, quoting the same scripture, God will punish me severely if I will not do this. Is it possible, friends, to use scripture? To use religion, religious uh, practices in order to follow um, and to go on our, our way, to pursue our so-called dreams, passions, uh, desires. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible, friends. Yehazai wasn't a bad person. He was Elisha's servant. Servant means assistant. As Elisha was Elijah's assistant. 
I don't know. Probably God has a special plan for Gehazi to be the next prophet. Because he was there closer. And he learned how to deal with spiritual things. And while he was there, while he witnessed this great um, miracle, never happened in Israel before. They, the, even Jesus Christ said there were a lot of uh, leprous people during that time, but only Naaman was healed. And he was there. And instead of trying to write down an article for the news in news or to send it to the conference to be published, look at this wonderful miracle. He looked at the bags Naaman brought and he said, No way. My master was wrong when he did that. So he pursued Naaman. And so on. we can comment a lot, verse by verse, word by word. Uh, Naaman looked into the mirror and he saw Gehazi running and running. And so he lied. He used religious things. My master, two servants. That means it's not for me. It's not for my bills. It's for the church. It's for the pastor, for the seminary students. They are for missionaries from Africa, for mission trips, for whatever. Do this for me. And anyway, he took them. He went home. And when he thought everything is under his control, I don't know how. I don't know how. But sometimes we may have the same uh, experience when we'll be confronted or challenged with the same question. Where did you go, Gehazi? Where did you go, Gehazi? You know, you, didn't, you don't need to learn a lot of psychologic uh, um, knowledge, to have psychological knowledge to know something. When a person comes, you see him satisfied, you know? Two bags of talents, a lot of money, new clothes. I don't know where he will take those clothes because they are Syrian clothes. You cannot go to a, a Jewish church with those clothes. Plus, his master will see him. But I don't know. He had his own uh, uh, story to tell. Where did you go? And he said, your servant did not go anywhere. He could have said, I went outside. I was running around to see how the Syrians are living, to be sure they're not coming back, uh, to see what's going on in, on the fields. He could have said that, a closer lie to the truth. But he said, your servant did not go anywhere. Friends, if someone will ask you today, where did you go this week? Well, no, I didn't go anywhere. I was a decent Christian. I was a decent Adventist. I didn't do anything. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I ate what I was supposed to eat. I drank what I was supposed to drink. I said what I was supposed to say. Nothing. Friends, when we had that kind of attitude, in order to be saved, this is the, the, the strangest thing I discovered in the Scripture. God doesn't want this. God doesn't want this. But in order to save us, God uses strangest things methods in order to wake us up, in order to uh, uh, grab our attention. And Elisha had to tell him, the Spirit of the Lord was with me. And he described what happened. Now, speechless. Speechless. Not only speechless, but immediately, instantly. The leprosy Naaman brought to the Jordan River, into the baptistry, came upon Gehazi and also on his descendants. The Bible says forever. I'll take that expression as long as. Not forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. The word forever in the scripture, when it's about people, it's limited in time. As long as they live, as long as there are some specific conditions, when the word forever is related to God, it's forever and ever. But that doesn't, that doesn't help a lot. A person that comes to Israel to be healed, to be cured, to be blessed, leaves his problems there. In a person from the house of the Lord, closer to the greatest privileges in the world, 
takes the problems upon himself instead of staying away from that. And the tendency of Adventists is, and I don't want to say all of us, but some of us, is to be not, not to be satisfied with what the Lord has. Not to be satisfied with the service we are involved at this point and to look over the fence, to look at Naaman, to look at their bags, to look, to look at their lifestyle, to say, you know, I would like to be like them. I cannot. I committed my life to God right now. I am baptized. I am committed. I have, a, I have an office in church. I cannot do that, but my heart is there. Friends, that's leprosy. That's sin and consequences in our lives. That's why in this passage, we have one person that is blessed, healed, restored. You know, a person that is cursed. Cursed not because God wants that, but because he made that decision. And he lost everything. And we have here several lessons from this passage. First, opportunities and privileges are not a guarantee for success or for spiritual blessings. Just because we are here, we worship here, that's not a guarantee. Where is our heart? Where is your heart? Where, where is your heart this week? If you say your servant did not go anywhere, and if it's true, it's true. But if you feel you are lying, if you feel you are covering, and even, even if nobody today has the spirit of Elisha to tell you the truth, the Holy Spirit still is in our hearts, in our minds, in, in, in among us. And the Holy Spirit can tell us for sure, can talk to our conscience. Titus, you weren't that kind of obedient you thought you were you are here, but you went astray. At least admit that, and at least uh, repent of that. Spiritual privileges can become a curse for the for the unconverted, um, unconverted heart, because we are used to live our lives in this environment, to pray, to read, to worship, to come, to do things. Um, and we don't feel a need to get even closer to God, to even dedicate more time to God and so on. And we can say, no, we are saved. Actually, I am first in line to be the next prophet. And that's deceiving for us. Because and the Bible said, Jesus said, there will be people from, of, they will come from all the corners of the, this earth. And they will sit at a table with Abraham. But while the people of the house, they will be rejected. Why? Because they thought they are in charge. They are there. But uh, spiritual privileges can become a curse for the unconverted heart. Gehazi had his home paid. Wherever Elijah went, Elijah took care of everything. I would like a, 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 a life like that. He had food. His food was covered. Whenever Elijah went, in what Elijah ate, Gehazi had food. Uh, Gehazi had the health care that was provided not by the government, by the prophet of God. And imagine Gehazi had the issue. Elijah was there to help him, to cure him to perform a miracle for him. But for a few things, he lost everything. He lost everything. Did you see people in life, they lost everything? They spent 50 years of working hard, neglecting their families, spiritual lives, and everything. And at the end, they lost everything. And even if they didn't lose material things, they lost relationships. At the uh, deathbed, they started to regret they didn't invest in the most important things in their lives. As you see, one comes and finds joy in happiness. The other comes to take the leprosy, the first brought. The last question I have for you and for me today is, what's your motiva motivation 
you had when you came to church today. And I pray and hope all of us came today to have that special encounter with God. To have that special commitment with Him. To dedicate for the first time or to rededicate our lives to Him. And to go home with that desire to be sure we worship the only God of the universe. This is my prayer for you today. For myself, my family, and for our spiritual family here. We came today to be rebaptized and then go home in peace, joy, and happiness. And I don't want anyone to be on the other side to look for some bags and to lose everything. May God bless you, bless your family members, bless our church, bless our community here in Madison, bless all people all over the globe. In uh, I also pray for God, God's opportunity for us to come closer to Him and to become His ambassadors wherever we go. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your invitation to come and to leave everything here at church, to leave our burdens, our worries, to leave our concerns, to leave our sins, to leave everything we brought today. And Lord, please help us to be like Naaman, to go home in peace, to go home with joy of salvation in our hearts, to go home with that happiness that people will notice right away, and to go home with a desire to worship you in that special way you want us Please bless every one of us today with this feeling and with this desire. Bless all our family members, wherever they are. Bless Darla. Bless those who didn't commit their life to you yet. And those who want, we want, that our family members, we want them and we pray for them. We also pray for our community here in Madison. There are a lot of people out there. They watch CBN or they don't. Please bless them with a special feeling that in this place, in their conscience, the Holy Spirit can work and they can transform their lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.